Hi, my name is Faustine Silverheis and I have an idea for a horror movie title The Pit and the Pendulum. This horrific story is based on a short story written by Edgar Allan Poe and published in 1842. The Pit and the Pendulum tells a terrific story of a man who is being judged during the Spanish Inquisition. We do not know what crime he committed to deserve the judgment. In the beginning, he felt sick. I was sick, sick unto death with a long agony, states the story. He receives a death sentence but doesn't know how they're going to execute him. The sentence, the dread sentence of death, was the last of this thing's accentuation which reached my ears. The trial looked terrifying and the main character was so disgussted and agonized that he fainted. Ed's wound, but still will not say that all of consciousness was lost, said the main character. Then, he woke up in an obscure dungeon. He lost track of time and didn't know how for how long he had been unconscious. But what he also didn't know when he opened his eyes is that there was a pit in the center of the room. The cell was so dark that he couldn't see where he was. He didn't even know if he was still alive. But he said, yet for a moment did I suppose myself actually dead. The main character never stops fighting during the entire story. He always finds a way to survive, even when the reader himself thinks he won't. He thinks that maybe he is not dead and he could fight something into his room to save his life. He first thought that he was alive but in a tomb, but then as he could get up and walk he understood he was free. He decided that he wanted to learn a little bit more about the dimensions of the mysterious dungeon he was in. So he got up and tried to measure the size of the room. While he was counting the feet, he tripped and fell. Luckily, he didn't fall into the pit, but he understood that the Spanish army wanted him to die into it. Then he fell back asleep. When he woke up, the lights of the dungeon were back on, and he could see the entire room. But this time, it was tied up to a framework of food. To this, I was securely bound by a long strap resembling a saw cycle, he said. On the sailing of the prison, there was an axe. It was going downer and downer, and he was supposed to cut his toss and to kill him. This scene is very stressful for the reader. I would not know if he's going to survive until the very end of the action. At first, when the axe was descending, the main character was frightened. I grew frequently mad, but then, as he realized he had to think, he came down. And then, I felt suddenly calm, and lay smiling at the glittering death, as a child at some rave boy ball. The dungeon was also full of rats, eating the rest of the bodies of the prisoners who died in the pit. The main character was very clever. Even when he was petrified by fear, he managed to think straight and to use the rats to let him escape. His plan to liberate himself worked, and he escaped the sharp steel that was supposed to kill him. I at length felt that I was free, he said. Even though he was free of the framework, he knew that he was still in the hands of the Inquisition. He felt like he was being watched, that every move he was making was being analyzed by the guardians of the prison. But as soon as he got up, he realized something was happening. The shapes and the colors of the dungeon were changing. These colors had now assumed, and they were momentarily assuming, a startling and most intense buoyancy that gave to the spectral and fiendish portraitures an aspect that might have thrilled even firmer nerves than my own, he said. He couldn't believe it. It wasn't real. He smelt the smell of eaten iron. He gasped for breath. He panted. But that wasn't all. The room was also not square anymore, but more in the shape of a lozenge. There had been a second change in the cell, and now the change was obviously in the form, he said. The walls were coming closer together. They were being pushed together in the center of the room to force him to jump or to push him in the pits. This is a very important moment in the story. The main character can either jump into the pit by himself or let the walls push him into it, and then let the enemies kill him. As the walls were getting closer and closer together, he decided to jump. I struggled no more, 
but the agony of my soul found vent in one loud, long and final scream of despair, he said. He felt like he could not let the Inquisition kill him, so he closed his eyes and jumped into the pit. As he was about to fall, someone caught his arm. A now stretched arm caught my own as I fell, fading into the abyss, he said. It was that of General Lazal. The main character had been saved by the French general. The Inquisition had lost the war, and he was alive and free.